Everybody has their secrets, even you and I. For all I know, you might be a terrifying creep with a pile of dead bodies in your basement, but nobody has more secrets than the Vatican. Just what are these guys up to? Well, once you know, your jaw is going to hit the floor. These are the secrets the Vatican doesn't want you to know. Number 20. The Lateran Treaty of 1929 First up, we have something that really isn't that much of a secret, to be honest. In fact, this is the legal junk that was declared in order to make the Vatican into the independent, well, kind of, city-state that it is today. The pacts were signed between the then Kingdom of Italy and the Holy See, meaning that the Pope in his role as the Bishop of Rome and the Lateran Palace in Rome in 1929. These agreements recognize the Vatican as a sovereign state and arrange the financial agreement between Italy and the Roman Catholic Church. It was developed further in 1948. The darker stuff about it is that it involved Mussolini, who was the Prime Minister of Italy in 1929 when it was signed. Oh, and depending on your own personal religious persuasion, you may or may not enjoy the fact that it essentially recognizes the full authority of the Holy See over the state of the Vatican. This means that the Pope has full power and is recognized kind of officially as God's representative on Earth. If you happen to enjoy such a thing, it also confirms the whole layout of the Vatican territory and its jurisdiction, which is also the area that's exempt from paying any taxes. The Lateran Treaty also agreed on a financial compensation to the Vatican State for the so-called losses of the Papal States, and these were a large area of Italy that was under the direct rule of the Pope from 756 until the unification of the country in 1870. It also laid out some of the public funding from the Italian state purse for the Catholic Church in Italy. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Now here's a secret the Vatican doesn't want you to know. Did you know that there are rumors that the Vatican is actually secretly Satanist and working in league with the devil? <laughs> I know it's crazy, but hey, there are people out there who really believe it. Quite where the rumor came from, nobody knows, but given Catholicism's rather ropey ethical history, it stands to reason that a lot of people would think ill of the institution. But to go so far as to assume the Pope is in league with Satan himself? I mean, what do you think? Reasonable or deranged? As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below by using the hashtag Sweet Topic. Number 19. The 1994 Rwandan Genocide The Roman Catholic Church has no doubt been involved in some pretty heinous things in its long and storied history, but it seems to have an especially bad track record for offering protection and sanctuary to the perpetrators of some of the world's most horrific crimes against humanity. They've been less than discerning in the allegiances that they formed and the pacts in which they have made. One such moment of shame was following the Rwandan genocide of 1994. This was one of the most shocking and brutal events of modern memory. Between April 7th and July 15th of 1994, the genocide of as many as 800,000 people took place in Rwanda. The victims of this massacre were predominantly members of the minority ethnic Tutsi group and also some people who were moderates in the Hutu and Twa. They were slaughtered by Hutu militias in the shocking and intensely brutal assault. The Catholic Church was apparently complicit in the genocide and in the protection of its perpetrators during the aftermath. Many of the massacres took place in churches and missions where the people had taken shelter while they were being hunted by the extremists. Catholic priests and members of the church were participants in the violence and were responsible for some of the most horrific crimes. The Vatican then participated in offering sanctuary and protection to those who had committed these genocides. In fact, the Catholic Church as a whole was responsible for going as far as genocide denial and the trivialization of the atrocities, and they shielded many people from justice. In 2017, Pope Francis made a public statement in which he asked for forgiveness for the church's role in the genocide, and for the nation of Rwanda and those who mourn, this was seen as a pretty weak response that didn't go far enough. Number 18. The Dead Sea Scrolls 
The Dead Sea Scrolls are a collection of ancient Jewish texts and manuscripts that were discovered in the late 20th century in the vicinity of the Dead Sea, near modern-day Israel and Jordan. These scrolls are believed to have huge religious, historical, and literary significance. They include a wide range of documents like biblical texts, religious commentaries, hymns, calendars, and various other writings. The discovery of the scrolls had changed the study of ancient Judaism and Christianity and provided new insights into the development of religious thought, the evolution of biblical text, and the cultural and historical context of the time. These manuscripts continue to be the subject of intense scholarly research and enthusiastic reception by Bible fans everywhere, as you might imagine they would be. But according to some, the Catholic Church has allegedly repressed some of these as it's believed that they would conflict with the Church's own agenda and dogma. But then again, that's basically what all branches of any religion do all the time. Choosing which bits of doctrine they want to follow is essentially the entire idea of religion in the first place, don't you think? Number 17. The Necropolis Under the Vatican The word necropolis means city of the dead, and these macabre places can be found all over the world, usually beneath the modern-day city. So it should come as no real surprise that there is indeed a necropolis beneath the Vatican, because you know, the Vatican is located right in the heart of Rome, one of the most well-preserved cities of the ancient past, and they really loved a good necropolis back then. This particular city of the dead is located beneath St. Peter's Basilica. It is the site of a massive historical significance and is the final resting place of a lot of popes. The burial ground itself dates all the way back to ancient Rome, but it would not be discovered until the 1940s when excavation work was being carried out in the area. It's full of all kinds of fancy sarcophagi, mausoleums, and a whole lot of artifacts from the ancient era, and in particular, relics of the papacy and the Catholic Church in Rome. Number 16. The Apocrypha Just like all religions have been doing for all of time, the Catholic Church has manipulated the text that it uses for its entire basis to suit its own purposes. There is a conspiracy theory that the Vatican actually removed 14 books from the so-called original Bible back in the 17th century. But to be honest, there is no such thing as an original Bible. It has been written and rewritten in many languages and translations, which has in turn altered a lot of the meanings and has been interpreted to suit the ends of various agendas all throughout its history. So when the Protestant Church also removed books from the Bible, stating that they were apocryphal, well, this is on the understanding that the texts that they chose to keep are somehow factual. But all of it is edited, and all of it has been rewritten, and all of it is used to serve an agenda. The Protestant Church removed the stuff that it didn't like, and so did the Catholic Church. But like all of this stuff, both say that they have the correct version, and that the other side is wrong, and that their beliefs are based on this reductive idea. Number 15. The Vatican Has a Time Machine this is a bit of an urban legend kind of invention. Well, a religious and Vatican-based legend slash secret. The chronovisor was purported to be a special device which allowed the user to see through time. Now, if this were a genuine, bona fide, legitimate thing, it seems as though it would have been making a whole shed load of money at some point by now. But what do I know about secret Vatican inventions? According to the story, the chronovisor was invented by a Benedictine monk called Father Pellegrino Ernetti. He said to have invented the device and then kept it a secret until the early 1960s when he told a Vatican priest by the name of Father Francois Brunet all about it. He said that he had the assistance of 12 scientists, which included a Nazi one, to make its development. The machine itself is said to have been created from antenna, cathode rays, and different metals that all receive light and sound signals across wavelengths. The claim is that the chronovisor would be used by the group of scientists to witness and document the events of the past, even the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. They said, rather conveniently for the Vatican, it should be noted, that they had therefore validated all the teachings of the Bible by peering into their visual time machine. Now, I don't want to poop the party, but if you could actually do this, 
then the best way to prove that stuff would be to show more people than a bunch of Vatican so-called science people and a Nazi. And naturally, since they mostly used it to confirm their own biases, how is anyone outside of that circle ever meant to believe a word of it? Sounds like a whole load of cobblers, to be honest. But nonetheless, they went ahead and published what they claimed was a picture of Jesus being crucified. Funny how much it looks exactly like a painting depicting the same scene, or in fact, as many people have since discovered, it is actually a cheap reproduction of a statue from a church in Umbria, Italy. Well, what a surprise. Number 14. The Vatican Secret Rooms the Vatican is a vast and sprawling palace with rooms that are open to the public on a daily basis, for a hefty fee and a very long queue. But as you would imagine, there are also plenty of hidden secret places inside the Vatican, most of which the public never get to see. Naturally, there are those private rooms in which the Pope lives and conducts his daily poping business, but there's also a place known as the Apostolic Palace. This is usually guarded and not available to the public, but when the Pope appoints new cardinals, there's a moment in time when this heavily protected place becomes, for a brief moment, slightly more accessible. Monsignor Robert Francis Prevost, Prefetto di Castello Perivesco. There are meet and greets with the new cardinals that are known as visits of warmth, and various parts of the usually closed off areas are sort of open to view. And if you manage to sneak off and peep into some of these usually hidden areas, during those visits, you may see the usually secret bathroom, which is decorated all over with erotic art that was painted by Raphael in 1516. Or perhaps one of the secret tunnels, which was constructed in 1277 and runs between the papal apartments and the Castel Sant'Angelo, which is used by popes to seek refuge if they happen to be under attack. Number 13. The Vatican Made Money From The Holocaust As we've already learned today, the Vatican has mostly definitely been involved in some shady stuff when it comes to responsibility for, and even the denial of atrocities in history. But when it comes to the Holocaust, the systematic genocide of 6 million Jews and many other marginalized people at the hands of Nazis during the 1930s and 40s, the Vatican seems to have not only stayed silent, but also may have profited. During the entirety of the Second World War and up until 1958, Pope Pius XII was the head of the Catholic Church. His papacy covered the entire period of the war and the Holocaust, and the role that he played during that time had been closely examined by scholars ever since. There are those who support the Pope and say that he made efforts towards diplomatic methods in order to try and protect victims of the Nazis, and they allege that he directed the church to provide aid, albeit discreetly to the Jews and many others during that time. However, there's also a strong argument that his efforts were completely inadequate and that his methods were overly cautious, with some even saying that he had remained silent in the face of the atrocities, with his desire to remain neutral, overriding any true morality. As well as all of this, there is also the very uncomfortable fact that there were Nazi spies within the Vatican, and that at least one of them is believed to have developed a scheme by which the Vatican invested money in Italian insurance companies, which took the assets of the life insurance plans of murdered Jewish people. The Vatican was not obligated to return any of that money, since they were an investor and not an insurer, so they allegedly kept it all, thus profiting from the Holocaust. Number 12. Dead Man on Trial Given all the weird stuff that we know that the Catholic Church loves to do, it should come as no surprise that back in the year 896, a recently deceased pope would be put on trial. Yes, an actual corpse was put on trial. This is the insane story of Pope Formosus, who was pontiff between 891 and 896. After he died, he was accused of violating canon law, so the then-pope, Stephen VI, and the political enemies of old Formosus decided that the best thing to do, well, that would be to have a trial to make this clear. The guy was dead, and so they dug him up, and at this point he was already nine months departed, and dragging him out of the earth and into the Roman Synod was pretty disgusting. But they did it anyways. They accused him of perjury, violating pope laws, and a bunch of other stuff, and they naturally had found him guilty on all charges. Although, how does a corpse even get a fair trial to begin with? They said his poping was now invalid, and all the things that he had done were quashed, and they chopped off his fingers. 
Apparently, this is some sacred pope thing. Then they chucked him into a grave, but changed their minds again and threw his body into the river. After this, the pope that oversaw all the nonsense didn't fare any better. He was pope for a bit and then imprisoned and strangled. The next pope reinstated Formosus and had his body retrieved and buried in St. Peter's Basilica. What a whole lot of messing about for those poor old pope bones. Number 11. Vata Leaks this is the Vatican leak scandal, and it turns out that for a place with as many centuries-old secrets as the Vatican, it can sometimes also leak like a sieve. Back in 2012, a book would be released which was stuffed full of secrets about the then-Pope Benedict XVI. The book was based on a heap of documents that had been leaked by the Pope's very own butler. The leaks had exposed all kinds of corruption, naturally, as well as blackmail and power struggles in the depths of the Vatican. The book exposed a lot of uncomfortable truths about an organization that has long held its secrets close to its chest, causing embarrassment for the papacy, and even revealed confidential letters that were written by Benedict to his personal secretary. The whole scandal revealed that the Vatican is riddled with infighting and jealousy, and it's subject to all manner of bad behaviors. Which is hardly surprising, but it still caused quite a kerfuffle nonetheless. Number 10. The Chief Exorcist of the Vatican Even though exorcism may seem like something that is only really seen in horror films and perhaps all the way back in medieval times, there's still a pretty faithful use of it within the Catholic Church. In fact, it was so widely utilized that the Vatican employed a chief exorcist. This role was held by Father Gabriel of Morth for 60 years, during which time he is believed to have performed about 160,000 exorcisms, or technically speaking, he performed 160,000 rounds of fabricated nonsense and fear-mongering about demons. There is still way too much emphasis on this damaging ritual and poisonous idea, and the Vatican still trains priests from all over the world to perform these so-called exorcisms every single year. Number 9. They Helped Nazi War Criminals Well, what do you know? The Vatican has done some super shady stuff in its time. I can hardly even believe it. Well, actually I can, because it seems perfectly regular that they've been up to no good. Here's a story of the Vatican participating in some especially shady goings-on in the aftermath of the Second World War. After a lot of extensive research, historians have unearthed exactly how many Nazi war criminals were able to escape to safety and evade justice for their crimes. You must plead guilty or not guilty. And it turns out the Vatican assisted them. Adolf Eichmann, Joseph Mengele, and Klaus Barbie, some of the more heinous actors in the atrocities, were all able to procure travel documentation and escape from Europe in the days following the ending of the war. It has transpired that the Red Cross acknowledged that as they were helping the refugees during the crisis, they also may have inadvertently assisted the Nazis since their whole system was completely overwhelmed during that time. But the Vatican has refused to comment on the fact that their refugee assistants handed out false identities to war criminals, which includes the aforementioned mass murderers. And there's a belief that they may have been aware of what they were doing, but since the Vatican archives are private, they keep that secret and the documents that could shed light on it hidden behind closed doors. Number 8. Scandals of the Vatican Bank can you believe that the financial arm of the Catholic Church, the Vatican Bank, or the Institute for the Works of Religion has been involved in a whole heap of scandal? I cannot believe that any religious organizations are ever in any way shady about money. But anyways, they've been involved in multiple scandals, and some of these even add Nazis into the mix. Hitler agreed to collect it at the source, as sort of straight as a payroll tax. You know, just to make sure it's really, really messed up. The Vatican Bank has been accused of money laundering. I mean, they have not been exactly discerning about what sort of money goes through their hands, so giving dirty money a little wash doesn't seem all that far-fetched. Every year that Hitler was in power, the Vatican Bank would receive church tax from the Nazis. So you know, laundering money from criminal enterprises, accepting cash from fascists, cleaning up distinctly dirty dealings, it's just all in a day's work for this bank. Number 7. Jesus does not exist. 
Billions of people apparently believe in Jesus Christ, but there are others who don't only reject the idea of Christianity, but actually doubt whether he even ever existed at all. Scholars of the New Testament are fairly certain that he was a real-life person, but they argue that even those who did not like him at the time still recognize that he was real. However, aside from the biblical writings, there's not actually any definitive archaeological evidence for the existence of Jesus. But then again, even archaeologists would not expect there to be physical evidence remaining for a man who was essentially a peasant from two millennia ago. Not leaving an archaeological trail doesn't mean that a person never existed, but there are only Christian writings that actually record anything about the life and death of Jesus. I'm telling you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God. So these are biased and don't really offer the full picture in terms of historical fact. There are mentions of the man within Roman and Jewish writings and historical recordings that do appear to corroborate some of the whereabouts and times, but beyond that, the evidence is spotty or entirely based on biblical writing. However, there's evidence that he most probably existed. The rest is all a matter of faith, or a lack thereof, I suppose. Number 6. Evidence of Extraterrestrial Life The Vatican is a shady place that's full of secrets, but do they actually have evidence of alien life? It's generally believed that the existence of aliens would be a pretty tough discovery for Christianity to explain, well, with all the creation myth and whatnot being somewhat inconsistent with travelers from outer space, but some believe that the Vatican already has knowledge of extraterrestrials and they're actually hiding it. This castle, an unassuming Jesuit from Argentina. Presumably because of the obvious issues with the Bible and the lack of mentions of E.T. Some say it wouldn't actually spell the end of religion, but that Christianity could simply adapt. They already believe in a whole bunch of stuff that's pretty out there, you know, like angels and resurrection, or, well, all of it to be honest. What a shift in perspective to accept that God also created aliens and would probably work for the most of them. What do you think, though? Let's debate all of this shiz in the comments section down below. Number 5. The Secrets of Fatima the Vatican, along with the Catholic Church in general, is a big fan of miracles. I mean, we would all be a big fan of actual miracles, but I don't know about you. A statue weeping blood or whatever just doesn't seem like an especially useful sort of miracle to me. But anyways, here we are in 1917, and this series of events that it became known as the Miracle of Fatima, or also the Miracle of the Sun. There was allegedly a prophecy by a group of shepherd children in Fatima in Portugal, and they said that the Virgin Mary would appear in October of 1917, and she would be in the business of performing miracles. Naturally, this would cause quite the stir, and plenty of people, funnily enough, began reporting all kinds of miraculous happenings. Witnesses said that they had seen the sun dancing or zigzagging in the sky and performing a colorful light show. These things apparently went on for around 10 minutes, and the local bishop quickly began an investigation and along with a priest became pretty convinced by these eyewitness accounts. Eventually, on October 13th of 1930, the miracle was determined to be worthy of belief and the cult of Our Lady of Fatima was permitted by the Catholic Church. There is, of course, the very slight possibility that the people staring at the sun for so long were seeing stuff that was a result of sunspots, but you know, who could possibly say? Number four. The Apostolic Penitentiary The Pope's absolute power is not only a kind of symbolic situation, the guy is really believed by many to have the authority of the Most High, and that involves doling out judgments. The Apostolic Penitentiary is a department of the Holy See, which is mainly a tribunal of mercy, meaning that this is an official part of the Vatican in which the Pope can literally deal with issues of forgiveness. For the sins of the Catholic Church. So basically what it means in practice is that the Catholic Church, or those within it, can do a whole lot of heinous stuff, and then they're judged to be forgiven in a secret, not-for-public-view tribunal in which the Pope and his pals can dole out the punishment, usually stuff like excommunication or forgiving sins on the behalf of God. It's an extremely thorny issue, especially when you consider the Catholic Church has not exactly proven itself to be especially good at upholding its own moral standards. Number 3. The Vatican Archives These archives are where all the acts that are formally declared by the Vatican are kept. It's basically all written down laws and statements and whatnot that the Pope and his pals do and have done all throughout the history of the Catholic Church. 
It's a vast collection, which is estimated to contain 53 miles of shelving. The secret archives are the property of the Pope himself until he dies, and then they're handed over to his successor. As well as all the holy papers, the Vatican Archive also contains papers relating to the state, accounts, and correspondence as well. It sounds all very mysterious with its secrecy and such, but most of the stuff in the archive is likely really, really boring poper work about the Vatican's vast wealth. The reason that it's secret is really only on the account of the fact that hardly anyone has access to it. Scholars can request very limited access to some more historical documents, but mostly it's just kept out of reach. Presumably also out of reach of the tax man. Number 2. 2000 year old Bible. According to a few random people on the internet, there's allegedly a 2000 year old gospel that's been hidden by the church. And how these few chosen internet y people know this, well, who could possibly say? This is the Gospel of Barnabas, and according to people who study such things, it was actually penned in the Middle Ages and not 2000 years ago. It does make some claims that would likely offend a Christian sensibility, like that Jesus was not crucified but was replaced by Judas Iscariot on the cross. Anyways, as we've seen already, there are a whole bunch of different texts that disagree with each other and have been left out by the churches over the years. And this could just be another one of those, but it seems a bit late to the party to be honest. Number 1. The Saint Malachi Prophecy All the way back in the late 11th century, there was an archbishop who became a saint. This is Saint Malachi, who has several miracles attributed to him, as well as the so-called prophecy of the popes, which has since been somewhat discredited. The prophecy of the popes, despite being considered apocryphal, is the thing that has captured the most attention in regards to old Saint Malachi. This was a vision that he allegedly had in which he had seen that there would be only 112 more popes before the ending of the world or the Last Judgment, but nobody really believes it anymore, and so that's that then. Well, that's all from the shady corridors of Catholic power for today. Which of these fascinating ideas really got your brain going? And have you ever seen any of the secret parts of the Vatican? Go ahead and let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.